Hello Eva Bauken and welcome to this quick tutorial. In this video we will take a look at the Luma Range mask within Capture One Pro. The Luma Range feature is actually a feature within the masking tool in Capture One Pro. You can find the Luma Range mask within the Layers tools. In case you are missing the Layer tools, simply right click into the open space, go to Add Tools and Add Layers. So the example image I chose to show you the application of the Luma Range mask with has got a white backdrop which isn't white everywhere which I will show you by switching on the exposure warning. So the exposure warning is showing red everywhere where the values exceed 250. So like if you take a look at the RGB values over here, so the RGB values are displayed of the tip of the mouse. So these values are 241, 244, 250. So the 250 value of the blue actually gets the exposure warning to show red on this dot. The target is that every single pixel of the backdrop is 255 for each single RGB value. Since the Luma Range mask is a feature of masking itself, the first step is to create a mask. In this case we will do it by creating a new adjustment layer with a filled mask by right clicking onto the plus and then choosing new filled adjustment layer. You can display the mask by pressing M on your keyboard. I changed the mask color from red to green just because I'm using it on a human so and the skin color is very close to red so it's better to see the mask or to distinguish the mask and the, the skin tones by choosing a green color. Now to access the Luma Range feature you just have to click on the Luma Range button over here and then the single parameters of the Luma Range mask will show. Uh, over here you can see the range, so these are the brightness levels from 0 to 255 maximum at the moment. These separators over here are at 20 and at 235. What you can see down here is the fall off or the feathering. So if you want to have a hard edge, you simply change the fall off to the same value as the range. And if you pull it out a bit, you will getting softer edges basically. Then over here you've got the invert range button or checkbox, so which just means at the moment everything that is within this gray area is masked. If you check invert range, everything outside this area will be masked. So like the levels below 59, including the feathering or excluding the feathering and so on. Then down here the radius and sensitivity uh, are being used to soften uh, your mask basically. So the radius at the moment is set to zero. This means that every single pixel, the brightness value of every single pixel decides if it's masked or not. If you increase the radius, it's not the single pixel that is um, used for the decision if something is masked, it's more an area that is being chosen. So as you can see, the higher the radius, the softer the mask is. Radius zero, it's very granular over here. So you've got also little dots that are masked and little dots that are not masked. If I increase the radius, it's more a surface that's being masked. So now to show you the sensitivity a little bit better, I have to apply the mask first because I cannot zoom in otherwise. So now I'm zooming in on the hair, opening the Luma range again. So, and increasing the radius. So now keep an eye on the hair. Depending on the sensitivity, it's either getting very, the mask is getting very soft or you're getting more structure in the mask. So these are the, the two sliders basically you can use to define your masks and your, the edges of your masks. So I will reset it to the original values again. And then the display mask feature is pretty self-explanatory. It's the same as the M button. So if it's checked, your mask is shown. If it's unchecked, your mask is not being shown. So now I will zoom out again. So my goal actually was it to apply the mask to the backdrop only. So in this case, I will increase the upper value to maximum without any fall off because I want to mask every value from 255 uh, downwards and then I will increase the lower range until there are areas on the backdrop not being masked. So as you can see now 
the edges are not bright enough anymore to be masked. So I will lower the levels until everything is masked again. Now I've got some areas on my model which are at the moment masked because they have got the same brightness or they are within this brightness level which is not an issue because remember it's a standard mask so it's not a big difference from a, a, a standard mask so you can choose the eraser tool and simply erase the mask where it shouldn't be applied so it was my goal to get the backdrop to pure white so i will uh, switch off the display of the mask and switch on the exposure warnings again so you can see what's happening and now i selected the layer I'm now going to the exposure and I will increase the exposure to maximum. So as you can see, only the mask area is affected. Nothing is happening uh, in the center of the model or the center of the image. So I will switch off the exposure warning again. And so remember my target was to get every RGB value to 255. So and as you can see, everywhere within the image everything is at maximum. So that's one example of how to apply Luma range masks and how to use them. And uh, I just want to add one more thing. So the the base mask uh, you are using or the base masking can be anything you can use for masking. So it can be um, a brush based mask where you then apply the Luma range to or with. It also can be uh, the gradient so like let's use the radial gradient so that's a gradient mask so you can also apply the luma range mask with this one so it's all the same remember the luma range is basically a feature um, that's within the mask tool and is being applied to masks so that's it for this video guys if you liked it i'm happy to get a Thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and always remember to listen to more heavy metal.